We are starting with patron input. Is that Lisa? Yes, thank you. Um, tonight you have no patron input submissions from our uh, SurveyMonkey document. And we're double checking okay. to make sure it didn't break. I did double check. I turned it on and checked the link and turned it off and checked the link to make sure it was the right link. It was the right link. You really have no input tonight. Okay, well. Um, so action items, um, Wes. Thank you, Chair Spires. Good to be with you tonight. We have um, a bond related item before you tonight, 2021-246. This is a resolution to approve the sale of a two room classroom modular building. Um, the uh, district's policy for surplus property, um, disposal of surplus property requires that anything that is valued or estimated value of $25,000 or more um, must be um, declared surplus by a board resolution. We anticipate that this modular building is going to be worth more than $25,000. So we're bringing this uh, proposal to you tonight. This uh, modular building is at Gardner Middle School. We installed it in 2016-17 because we were running out of classrooms at Gardner Middle School to accommodate not only student growth, but also providing um, enough uh, elective courses for students to be interested in. And so we uh, acquired a two room classroom modular building and put that in at Gardner Middle School right next to the gym. And we did get to use it for a few years before COVID presented itself and then the bond came along. And um, we really don't didn't have any plans for it except that we knew we needed to move it from its current, current location because it resides where the play fields will be at the new Gardner campus. And we need to have the uh, modular building removed before the end of June. Uh, we did some initial um, uh, alternatives analysis. Um, one, keep it ourselves, move it to a different location and uh, install it. And when we, when we priced that out, got a price from a, a uh, relocation contractor and then measured all the different um, land use, building permits and so forth, um, items that we would have to go through. We realized that it would probably cost us somewhere between $75,000 and $100,000 to have the um, unit uh, relocated and installed. Um, and uh, that surprised us a little bit, but um, when you look at all the things that have to happen on a building that size, to take it to a, a new location or to replace it or to have it as a replacement to an existing building, um, there are some significant costs and what you have to do to get the, the site ready as well as get the, the building um, ready for relocation and then reinstalled. We then uh, went out and did some preliminary testing with some of the other districts in, in the state that were looking for modular buildings at the time. This says as of about two weeks ago and we got immediate interest from uh, districts throughout the state. And um, it appears that it will easily raise um, $25,000. And I fully expect that we'll raise more than $25,000. Um, we do have some, some districts in Clackamas County who are interested in the building as well, since it's such a short drive for them and the relocation cost would be significantly less. So if you were to assume somewhere between $25,000 and $50,000 in revenue versus $75,000 or $100,000 in cost, then the positive cash flow impact to the district would be somewhere between, um, I would say between $150,000, around $150,000 to $175,000. And that's why we brought this, this um, um, resolution to you tonight. This is, uh, this is um, does not mean we have to sell the modular building. It only allows us to sell it. And if we do not receive bids that are um, in the range that we expect them to be, then we'll take a step back and, and reevaluate the, uh, the alternatives that we have before us. But at this point, to even offer it in a competitive non-binding um, bidding solicitation, we have to have board approval. 
So that's why we brought it for to you tonight. And I would be uh, more than happy to answer any questions for you. So Oh, Myers. oh Wes, sorry, go oh, ahead. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, no, I, I was I was going to make a, I was gonna move and then we could go to questions. Okay. Oh, okay. Yep. That's the proper, that's the proper Thank etiquette. So go you. for it. Thank you. Uh, I move that the board approve 2021-246, uh, the sale of two room classroom modulars or modular one single. Mm -hmm. A second. All right. Discussion. I, I wanted to ask, um, and then Rob, I'll and Yvonne, I just wanted to, um, I, I hear parents in my voice saying, I mean, in my head saying, um, why are we getting rid of space when we need to distance the kids? Mm. And I, mm. I wonder what you, what your response to that is. And maybe you answered that earlier. Well, um, I guess my answer back to that would be is, um, that would assume that we need to continue to distance kids in September. And um, in the meantime, um, we could, um, we have to move the building or we have to demolish it. We, I don't think we would demo, demo it, but we would have to move and store the building, which is only gonna cost us thousands of dollars per month um, while we wait to decide if we need it or not for, for distancing. Um, and this would be, you know, to two classrooms. There are no bathrooms in the building, so it does limit the uh, location, the ability to locate it in a location that has bathrooms available. Um, and that's another limiting factor to the building. But in some cases, the building is is what is desired in that uh, way, shape, or form. But it does um, it does take off that square footage that's available to us. But again, um, that would have to be we'd have to spend between 100 and 150. That well somewhere around 75 to $100,000 to move it and relocate it to provide space that we're not sure we're going to need in September or not, so. Okay, so Rob, Yvonne, and then Anna. My question is pretty similar, but, but Wes, I'd just like to ask, because anytime looking at, you know, spending money when you're given those options, I always feel like there's a third option that might even be possible, but what if we do nothing? I mean, does it have to be demolished? Does it have to be moved? Um, I mean, that's a good question, Rob. Yeah. Um, again, it, it, it currently is located next to the existing Gardner Middle School building, which will be demolished uh, beginning. I think you'll see heavy demolition, demolition starting the end of June. Okay. And, um, and it, the, we, we can't, um, we took a look at trying to locate that modular on site somewhere but we could not figure out a way to do that because it takes up a, a fair bit of space. And so um, the third option to leave it in place would actually just mean you're deciding to have it de demolished because that's what the contractor will do. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Yvonne. So, yeah, so I, my question's kind of along the same lines. I know that over the years we have um, sold modular buildings and then we've had to purchase modular buildings and then we've had to sell modular buildings again. And I'm just wondering if we have some long-term projections on, on, on what is our investment in these things? And um, is, what are our other options? I guess, same question that Rob has. What, is, what are our other options? I mean, when you look at, are we, going, are we gonna need to purchase modular buildings for some other function in the next three to five years? And if so, that's a whole nother cost that one, that isn't, you know, mm -hmm. taken into in this in this sale. So I'm I'm a little hesitant to. I guess I would just like to know what what yeah. the long term. Projection. That's a good question. The long term, um, the long term, um, you know, as you look at our pre-COVID um, enrollment forecasts, um, we were we were about four to five years probably more like three years or so before we'd have to, to create some capacity to add our elementary schools. And definitely within five years, we would, we would have to find some capacity. And again, this is pre-COVID. I'm not, not saying that, because that seems to be probably a, a hoped for result that we would return to pre-COVID right away. And so um, the district, when it was doing its bond planning, um, this is one of the key parts to our bond plan was to say that 
knowing that we needed to um, have additional elementary school capacity in the three to five year window that we would aggressively um, pursue property to um, um, acquire middle school um, um, for a future middle school to replace Ogden. And then that the existing Ogden that, that we're currently renovating would become an elementary school. And so it would require a little bit of re rebound, some boundary changes, but it would provide us with a, um, a, a an exe exemplary uh, elementary school that could really show off the prototype concept of collaborative project-based learning that we're eager to provide at the elementary level as well. And so as some districts would go down the modular school, modular building route for many years before they would actually build a permanent structure. We, we have a pathway to get there in five to seven years, five or six years, um, given our, um, our, our current longer term capital plan. So that's how we, I, and would we need a two room modular for a couple of years? I'm not really sure about that. Um, um, we, in my tenure, I think in, in operations, we've only bought and installed, well, we've done one at McLaughlin recently because they had um, pre-COVID needed to create um, a, an extra classroom because we were relocating a special ed program, partial relocation of a special ed program to McLaughlin. And um, so we, we installed that modular building. That, that one and this, this two room modular at Gardner um, we're the only two that I've been involved in. So we haven't done a lot of modular building only because we haven't had the growth at the elementary level. It's grown a little bit, but it's been um, not as um, significant that we couldn't handle the pressure of it. So it, it's a little bit um, not knowing, but um, uh, that is a risk that down the road, three to five years, if we weren't able to build a middle school, I don't anticipate that we won't be able to, but if we weren't, then we would have to we would have to pivot and look at, at at building some capacity at some of our elementary schools. In the meantime, we'd have to put this classroom somewhere, modular somewhere, and it's hard to say where where the best place that would be. Um, um, we'd have to take a look at our uh, our uh, property layouts and configurations to see where the best place would be to put a, a two room modular building. Okay, Anna. We're all along the same lines here. Um, so um, we don't have property built for the next middle school as we transition Ogden into an elementary. Um, so we don't have a empty property to put it on. How many modulars do we have over at Ogden? Don't we have um, a little... Village. And, yes, that's what I was going to call it. Yeah, it is. It's a um, village. Yeah. But, but we're renting those. Those are leased. Yeah, we leased Lease. those for a little over a year. That's correct. Okay. Um, and thank you. And so mm -hmm. then, given those factors, mm -hmm. if we sell this one now, yeah. and then we want to buy one in three years, the going rate's going to be roughly what we are selling a used one for now plus inflation but we haven't had to pay for storage maintenance upkeep and potential repairs that's correct yeah. okay and again it's um when you look at the the growth patterns yeah. in Oregon city it's it's hard to predict which elementary school is going to be the one that needs the um, extra capacity the most and again um, if you look at our longer term plan the plan was to um, bring online a whole new elementary school, do some boundary shifts to support that new elementary school. And then we would be able to make a really significant dent or um, um, handle a lot of capacity changes with that because a new middle, our new, um, if Ogden was to become an elementary school, you could easily put 600 students. It's designed for 600 students versus but, this building, which is designed for 60. Right. So, so no. did I lose you? No, I'm sorry. Okay, you disappeared from my screen. I was gonna oh. say the, the obvious thing though, 
you yeah. know, we had Mike Reisling talking earlier about they need storage space, all of their big equipment's outside. Can't yeah. we fit at least a couple mowers in there? <laughs> Yeah, that's a good question. Can it be repurposed? That's an excellent question. It <laughs> it's only structurally able to be repurposed as office space. It, yeah, I know. That but, that's a, but it's a good question. Though. I mean, generally repurposing it for some other use. And yeah. again, we'd still spend the same amount of money, about $175,000 to $100,000. Plus, we would have to add some remodeling then to put offices in it. So that would even drive the cost up a little further. Just following the same thread here of how mm -hmm. can we. Yeah, no. How can we good think? Questions. Really good questions. Oh, okay, so Connie and then Brian. All right, um, Wes, how old is this modular? Um, it was, uh, menu, well, actually it was built in 2016. Okay, so it's not that old. No, and, it's not. And, and I know you said something about, you know, what the market will bear, but can you give me the ballpark again on what it's worth? Uh, 25 to 50 thousand dollars. 50 would be on the high end. Okay, so I, I'm okay. So I'm going to make a blanket statement here that I would have, I would be really hard pressed to spend a hundred thousand dollars to move a modular classroom that's worth twenty five thousand dollars. So that's that's my blanket statement. Okay, Brian. Well, I guess the big elephant in the room is how does a how much does a new one cost? How much did that one cost, Wes, when we bought it? Just um, in itself, just itself, yeah. you know. Yeah. I think the, the new one costs around 175000 or so. It depends upon what kind of um, extra features you put in the building, but generally around 175. dollars And so. that's, that's without plumbing and everything, isn't it? No? Yeah, these are, these are without plumbing. Yeah. That's yeah. Just, they're just basic rooms with an interior wall that has a door. Um, they meet all their current energy codes. It comes with an ADA ramp couple of porches um they're very nice they're they're nice classrooms yeah you got to understand that anybody that's looking at this we've got to make it marketable because we have to get rid of it and if somebody's looking at buying a new one for a hundred and fifty thousand or something now uh i don't know what it would be cost now with the price of materials but that's true i haven't cost them since the price of wood <laughs> has gone up dramatically Jeez. Um, mm -hmm. I would think that, you know, at, at uh, at 50,000 max, I mean, always it's still kind of a bargain to them. So yeah. who's ever having to do this? Cause they're going to have to put a hundred thousand into it to get it yeah. someplace and get a foundation under it and, mm -hmm. and uh, get it located and everything. So, yeah. okay. Got it. Yeah. I would think that the, the, it, as the new modular market, if it's gone up significantly in price, that's only going to drag the the price of used good used modular buildings will even go will go higher higher than their regular market price as well because of the fact that the market's so high. So, are we ready to take a vote, or is there are there more questions? All right, Brenda. Could you take pull the board? I would love to. Director Clamp. Uh, aye. Director Farmer. Aye. Director Tecordius. Aye. Director Saul. Aye. Director White. Aye. Director Kurdeman. Aye. Director Spires. Aye. Motion approved. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Get a Sorry, good price. Lucky, uh, putting you putting you on the grill there. <laughs> That's Ready. fine. Okay. Those are, no, those yeah. are great questions. Good thinking questions. Those are great. All right. So the next meeting is May 10th, work session and regular session, followed by May 24th. And um, with that, I'd like to adjourn the meeting and wish everybody um, an excellent rest of their evening and a uh, couple weeks. And thank you everybody. <laughs>